Hi, welcome to the Sam Lab webinar on qualitative research. I'm Carla, and I have here my um, coworker Elise Baby, and we're going to be talking to you about qualitative research and how to conduct it. So I wanted to start off with this quote um, that kind of encaptures qualitative research. It says, not everything that can be counted counts, and not everything that counts can be counted which is true when we think about qualitative research um, in comparison to quantitative research. Um, so to start off, what is qualitative research? So qualitative research is a strategy of collecting, analyzing, and interpreting textual data in order to understand opinions. Um, it is used for research on non-numerical data like text, but it can also include audio and photographs. And it can also be used to gather information on a problem or to explore new ideas for research. Um, it also focuses on qualities or meanings of experiences. So focusing on qualities in order to capture the essence of the human and the lived experience. Um, also quantitative research in comparison usually answers numeric related questions such as how much, how many, how often, or to what extent but it cannot answer why people behave certain ways, how opinions or attitudes are formed, or in what way an event unfolds. And that's what we're doing with qualitative research. We're answering why and how events occur. Um, it also focuses on personal experiences in context of a phenomenon. Um, and it helps us collect data that reflects a participant's own point of view instead of a researcher's interpretation of it. And also stories are told narratively and allow for chronological telling of stories. And we can capture which events led to certain consequences. So that is a little bit about qualitative research, but how does this compare to quantitative? So the data we collect through these methods are expressed different, differently. Um, qualitative research captures responses primarily through text, as I've mentioned before, whereas quantitative data is collected numerically. Also, qualitative research generally uses much smaller sample sizes than quantitative. Um, that's because the goal of qualitative data is to first gather enough participants to explain and describe the phenomenon being studied, and two, to attain saturation. And saturation occurs when the addition of new participants no longer provides new information. So it's typical to see a quantitative study with hundreds of participants, whereas in a qualitative study, you might see maybe four participants or 10 at the most. Um, also with data analysis, qualitative methods analyze data by systematically identifying themes and participants' responses. So we typically summarize, categorize, and interpret what they are saying, as opposed to quantitative research where we conduct statistical analyses. Also, the focus of qualitative research is more exploratory as opposed to quantitative research, which intends to test existing theories and previously formulated hypotheses. In qualitative research, there are no a priori hypotheses because these ideas are formed through the results that emerge from the participants' stories. Also, qualitative research allows room for flexibility and responses that may not have been captured if researchers use surveys. So we get that through open-ended questions and in interviews, whereas um, quantitative research uses closed-ended questions and surveys. Also, the goals of the investigations um, also differ. With qualitative research, we want to understand, describe, and discover, whereas with quantitative research, we want to predict, control, and confirm hypotheses or previously established theories. So looking at an example, for instance, if we wanted to know how satisfied couples are with their relationship, if we took a quantitative approach, we might gather 500 participants and survey them. An example question would be, on a scale of one to five, how satisfied are you with your relationship? Then we would conduct statistical analyses on the data and find that on average, couples rate their relationships a 4.2. If we took a qualitative approach, we might gather 15 participants and conduct interviews. One example question we may ask is, what is the most positive aspect of your relationship with your partner? We would then transcribe the interviews and analyze the data for common themes and patterns. Um, notice that I didn't just ask 
participants, how satisfied are you in your relationship? Or on a scale of one to five, how satisfied are you? And that's because we want to ask open-ended questions and qualitative research interviews so as to gather more information. So looking at qualitative research design, here are some methods um, that you can use in a study. So the general and most common approaches to qualitative research are these five right here. The first is grounded theory, which entails inductively developing new theories that are grounded in data, i.e. experiences or thoughts of participants. Ethnography differs because we study people over a period of time in their natural settings. So we can think of observing healthcare personnel in a hospital during COVID. Phenomenological um, method is used when researchers want to look into a phenomenon and do so by capturing lived experiences of multiple participants that have gone through it. Narrative stories are a little bit different and we will typically look at the individual experiences of one or two participants. This often occurs over a long period of time and although might not be presented chronologically, it will use themes to construct a cohesive story. And finally, case studies um, are when we observe more than one individual and it will focus on one case, which can be an event, an organization, an activity or entity and attempt to explain or understand it through our qualitative research. So now that we know what these methods are, how do we actually gather data? So the most common is using interviews and one-on-one -on -one conversation between um, researchers and participants are really valuable in qualitative research. So in order to conduct interviews, you need a quiet private place and enough time to avoid feeling rushed. Interviews can follow an unstructured, semi-structured or structured guide of open-ended questions. And these questions will encompass themes you want to explore. So an unstructured interview can start with one open-ended question and then acts most like a natural conversation. A researcher goes into the interview with little to no preparation and must ask questions in a way that will get the most detailed response from the participant. This type of interview can also be time consuming and is best suited when the researcher has no clear motive for what they're looking to gain from the interview. A semi-structured interview is different and consists of specific open-ended questions that were prepared beforehand. But although there are specific uh, questions the researcher asks the participant, they're also able to ask follow-up questions that gather more detail regarding responses as they see fit. And then structured interviews, as you might have guessed, are somewhat like semi-structured in a way that there are specific questions that need to be asked. However, in this format of interview, the researcher cannot ask follow-up questions and must stick to the prepared questions. It's also important to still obtain demographic information of your participants, as this will provide context to their responses. You can also provide descriptions of the participants that declined to be interviewed, because there could be a difference in qualities of those that chose to participate and those that declined. So moving on to focus groups. Focus groups are similar to interviews, except the researcher interviews a small collection of participants at the same time instead of individually. A group will consist of five to 10 people with six to eight being ideal. Any less or any more may stall or disrupt conversation. And then there's a moderator there that will come with prepared questions and will encourage discussion among the group members in order to capture honest um, reflection of what is being studied. Also, it's important to record your interviews because you're later going to be transcribing the audio and analyze the content. Um, also, observational studies occur when the researcher places themselves in a setting they're looking to understand and taking notes on what they see, hear, and encounter. Participants may or may not know they're being observed depending on the context or the aim of the study. And finally, document review is when a researcher gathers pre-existing data, either through books, films, music, interviews, podcasts, social media, et cetera, and analyzes the chosen data. Um, but you should always get permission to use documents and the information that you will be analyzing. Mute myself really quick. Elise is going to take over. All right, uh, now we're going to discuss data analysis. So when collecting data, you can slowly begin to analyze it by making notes and highlighting things that stuck out to you during the interview. And once you have gathered all of your data, you first need to tr transcribe your interviews. After transcription, you will want to transfer the data onto either qualitative coding 
software or Excel. This will help you keep all of your information organized. Some researchers like to use Excel to code smaller amounts of data and others like to use specific programs to code any and all data. Programs like NVivo will help you keep all of your information in, in order and allow you to easily edit and make adjustments as you go along. In order to analyze qualitative data, you first have to identify patterns and themes that emerge from the participant stories. Thematic analysis identifies categories that emerge from the data. The themes can be created before the data collection or it can arise naturally during the analysis. First, you would want to familiar, familiarize yourself with the data and read the interviews prior to analyzing. Then you would code by making certain phrases or passages and label them. You will want to go through every line of the interview and ensure you are marking any and everything that may seem important or stands out. Some pieces of text may be coded differently multiple times and that's okay. Once you have distinct codes, you form broader themes that they may apply to. Some codes may no longer be relevant and you can remove these. You will then wanna go back and review the themes you've created and ensure they encompass everything you're looking for. You can then create subcategories, combine and split themes as you see fit. Then you will rename them to an accurate portrayal of the information you've gathered. Once you've gone through the entire process, you will begin to write what you found. It is important to code for exactly what the text shows and not make assumptions about what the participants might have meant. So for example, if a participant mentions that their mother picked them up from school, you would just simply code this as a childhood memory, but not a negative childhood memory unless the participant mentions as a negative experience for them. Content analysis occurs when you analyze data that is pre-existing. You go into certain data with a preconceived idea of what you're attempting to find such as if you wanna analyze the amount of online support for a presidential candidate on Twitter. Analyzing quality of data can take several months and even years. It's much more time consuming than conducting statistical analyses. Here we have an example of coding where um, we're coding certain passages with labels that may apply or you know appear multiple times consistently through the data. So as you can see in the slide, we have where it is saying uncertainty, which is highlighted with the I'm not sure and I don't know why or how. Both of these statements are showing that uncertainty. You would go and look for themes, such as the one in this example, to then highlight and um, code. Then you'd uh, transfer the codes into themes for the thematic analysis. So here we are then um, putting the codes into broader themes. So when we had that uncertainty, um, and leave it up to experts and alternative explanations. That was the theme for uncertainty and so on. Now we're gonna discuss about a validity in qualitative research. So validity in qualitative research involves or revolves around the accuracy of interpreted findings and credibility to the interviewees. Prolonged engagement refers to the amount of time a qualitative researcher has been at a given site. The longer they are in the field for, the more experience they have managing their data and forming relationships with the studied groups. This ensures that researchers do not draw conclusions from an isolated event, um, such as ethnographers observing a site for over four months. You will wanna use thick, rich, detailed descriptions of the participants, the setting and the accounts. This allows the readers to fully capture the findings and draw the same conclusions made in the study. Triangulation is when multiple sources share similar accounts and contribute to a phenomenon. Triangulation is very useful and important because it demonstrates that many people are having shared experiences. Sharing the findings of the study with the original participants is vital to the validity because it allows them to confirm or deny conclusions that the researchers have made. Addressing previous research or literature that is contrary to the study findings can contribute to the validity by disconfirming it with the real account of participants. Research should be upfront with the biases, beliefs, and assumptions so readers can gauge their positions on the topic. Finding an outside source familiar to the topic to provide feedback on the themes and findings is essential. Allowing someone outside of the field and study to review the study can help ensure logic and coherence of the report. So should you use qualitative research for your study? So what is the nature of the topic, topic of interest? Is it related to human experience, personal experience, cultural experience? Is it something that cannot be counted or expressed by numbers? You also wanna consider what do you wanna learn? 
Um, what do you know, want to know about this phenomenon? Will your information best be gathered through interviewing, observing, or analyzing content? Ask them, what are your goals? Do you want it to interpret and gain meaning from a topic rather than to just compare and measure? These are some of the questions you want to ask yourself before you um, gather any qualitative data. And that is it. All right, well, that is the end of our webinar. Thank you so much for attending.